Hi guys, and welcome to an unboxing video for the Quality Street 70th Anniversary Tin. Uh, no, that is not what this video is about, as you've, you've, you've all guessed, because that's not what the thumbnail or the title suggests. Uh, indeed, today I have a tin, a big heavy tin, full of some nostalgia. I, I hope this is nostalgic for some people at the very least, or interesting. Um, I hope this video has some kind of point. Anyway, um, kind of going on from that Yu-Gi-Oh figure video that I made a while ago where I kept them in a sort of sweet box, I've also done the same with some Pokemon figures, and this time it's Quality Street by Nestle. Um, those of you not in the UK, I I don't know, maybe you guys won't recognise what Quality Street is. This is like an assortment of chop. Doesn't matter, that's not what I'm here to talk about today. What I'm here to talk about is Pokemon Sliders. Do you remember those? I do. Sorry, I had to jump cut there because um, I genuinely couldn't remember then if they were actually called Pokemon Sliders or it was just what I used to call them, but no. These are indeed um, a series of Pokemon figures that were out kind of uh, around the height of Pokemania, around kind of Generation 1 and 2. Um, and a lot of them around, the, obviously, the Red and Blue era and Gold and Silver, I think they made a couple more. And as a child who was obsessed with Pokemon, as you can see, I bought a lot of these. Now, those are the keen eye you may notice. It's not all the sliders in there. For example, there's this Burger King spinner thing. This is kind of my tin of non tomi figures, or oh, these may be by Tomy, actually. Non-standard Pokemon figures. Um, so I will be grabbing things out that aren't necessarily Pokemon sliders, but most of these are. Um, I just want to take a delve into this, this nostalgia tin, which I picked up from my old house a couple of days ago, and I, I held off looking in it because I want to share the experience with you guys. So being as I've got him out, we're going to start off with uh, the Tangela Burger King rotator thing. So like, you're meant to spin him on here. I'm going to, I'm going to attempt to do it quickly. But from my, my from my memories, this was never very good. So hang on. Oh, like the balance is all weird. And if you like, I guess you could s try and stand them. I I don't understand. Anyway, I bought this a couple of years ago actually because I saw it in a second-hand game shop for one pound, which is insane because I love Tangela. Uh, one of my favourite Gen 1 Pokemon. It doesn't get enough love, really. However, I'm going to place him over there. Actually, do you know what? I'm going to drop the camera angle, so you guys might not be able to see into this tin for the rest of the video, but I will be pulling them out and stuff, so be right back. Okay, I'm back. So that's that's slightly better. I think we'll have them all in range. Uh, it's not going to be the end of the world if like we don't get an amazing look at these. So I'm going to kind of blindly grab these out. And um, we're just going to chat about them, really, um, and take a look at them. I, I don't know how long this video is going to be, and I don't know what the end point is going to be, but we'll see. Anyway, so this is a Pokemon roller, and it's apt that I pulled out Pikachu, who is obviously the mascot. Because, as you can see here, this is what makes it a roller. It is a metallic ball. Um, which, obviously, they kind of slide on. Uh, and there was a whole game thing, I'll show a picture, like here, but... There was a weird playset you could get that I did buy eventually, a few years later, I think, when I saw in reduction. Um, and you'd roll them through these, like, gates, and I suppose wherever it stopped on would decide your point. It was a weird game, to be honest. The only reason I bought these is because they were big and chunky Pokemon figures, which I loved. Because the Tommy ones are great, but an inch or two tall, especially for, like, the thinner Pokemon, they always seemed really brittle, and I was always a little bit hesitant to um, touch them. So another thing uh, I, I like to think, anyway, is a lot of these are in really good condition. Because I mostly kept them in, well, it wasn't this tin, it was another tin, but I moved it to this tin. Um, just because, well, you know, when I wasn't playing with them, I didn't want to get them to get damaged and stuff. And it seems that, you know, 10-year-old me had the presence of mind there, because these are pretty good. Uh, I did buy a few of these as well secondhand from other people uh, at, like, car boot sales and stuff. So some of them aren't going to be as, uh, in as good condition. So the first up, we've got Pikachu. Fat Pikachu, obviously, because uh, this is back in the classic days before he lost a lot of weight. He's he's a bit weird, I'm not going to lie. The colour's a little bit off, personally speaking. 
I'm also going to try and quickly read what's on the back here to see if I can tell what year it was produced. Okay, so I don't know how easy this is coming out on on the screen. This is indeed 1999, and if I turn it round, it says 1999. Honestly, it's really difficult to read what the hell... Actually, do you know, from the viewfinder, it's a bit easier. This is China there, which is country of origin. Um, yeah, so the whole gimmick, as I said, were these are slidey things, so they don't slide very far. That is the other downside about these figures. Um, I mean, you could, like, spin them around pretty well, but unfortunately they didn't travel very far, which is very annoying. Um, so I don't think they took off very well because of it, to be honest. But there we are. They are in, you know, interesting display units. Uh, so let's dive into the next one. All right, the next one up is the Tiny Turtle Pokemon himself, Squirtle. Uh, this I remember being actually one of my favourite um, figures. So the other the other reason I bought these as well, um, being a bit of a figure nude <laughs> ever since I was a young child, um, I did also notice obviously that the moulding of these figures were different to Tommy's, which meant that you could get Pokemon in different poses. Uh, so the Squirtle one kind of looked similar to this, but obviously this is bigger and I thought looked a bit better than the uh, the Tommy one you'd get in the pack. Ah, hey, wow, okay, this is incredible. I'm literally blindly picking them here. Right, next up is Bulbasaur. Now, I'm fairly sure I got two Bulbasaurs, because as I mentioned previously, I uh, did buy some from other kids when they got bored of Pokemon. Uh, getting bored of Pokemon, how is that even possible? A Bulbasaur, I think. Yeah, there we are, so he actually goes a bit further, but yet again, they're just, they I never fully understood these figures, they really do not travel great. Oh! <laughs> there we are, wow, I am, I am calling this, very nice. There we go, so that is my second Bulbasaur. Um, as you can see, same as the first. There wasn't really any, like, quality issues with these things, as far as I could tell, because I have a few doubles. Next up, it, uh, Come on, it should have been Charmander. Oh well. God damn it, my my luck stat. Uh, so the next one, <laughs> this one I always kind of liked, but kind of didn't as well, is Mewtwo, obviously. Um, now, you know, every child wanted a Mewtwo thing, so this was really cool. But two things bothered me. One, they never like... Because obviously he's got that tube on his neck, but they never cut that part out, which always bothered me, because it's like, well... Guys, I know, I know this is like a simple moulding job, you know, I mean, the tail is just part of the body and stuff, but like, surely they could have done something there. That just looks weird to me. Uh, and the other thing that really annoyed me is this, about this, is that Mewtwo looks really chunky. I mean, they all look chunky, to be fair, but I don't know, it just, it doesn't work, you know? Like, Mewtwo is not, he's not a chunky Pokemon. Uh, ooh, right. Next up, we have Charizard. So yeah, another example of the uh, like basic moulding here. Um, part of his fist is blue, as you can see there. Um, I mean, the quality of these certainly wasn't super high. I'm pretty sure you bought these in packs of like two or three, for the equivalent of like ten pounds, which is about twelve, thirteen dollars. So I I don't know. Um, I mean, to be fair, the moulding is decent. Like, look. You can see the wings there. I mean, the fire looks like fire. You know, you can see it's his tail. They're kind of like weird deformed things. Um, I kind of like the Charizard one. I like the whole, his wings are there, but it's they're kind of like a shield almost. I don't know. Um, I am going to run a room pretty quick here. Uh, oh, next up is Ivysaur. Uh, am I correct in saying there was a pack of the second stages? So you could get like... The f starters and then the second stages? I don't know. I don't think I have a war total. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I do and I've just forgotten. Ivysaur, yet again, is really cool. To be fair, the Bulbasaur line is super simple in this style, I think. Uh, how far? No, not very far at all. Okay. You go there. So, just a heads up as well. These are pretty much just going to be Generation 1. Uh, as I said, I think they made some during the sil gold and silver era, but I don't think I ever saw them in shops. 
Because if I saw them in shops, I'd have bought them. I, get, like, I'm going to do some other videos of my Pokemon figures. I have a lot of Pokemon stuff that I bought as a kid. So, um, if I saw them, I'd have bought them. So, I don't know, maybe they just didn't make as many, or maybe these didn't sell well. This one, right, this may be my favourite slider, actually, because this is exactly Gollum. Like, I mean, you could argue maybe his legs should be down there and he should be supported by them. But, like, that's just perfectly Gollum. There's, there, there's no need to really change anything. He just looks like he should. Um, and this is my only Gollum figure. I never got the Tommy Gollum that came in the Brock set. I bought Brock on his own years later, but that's, that's for another video. We've got, technically, the Pokemon that's planned to be the first mascot in the anime. We have Clefairy with its cute eyes and stuff. Uh, I mean, th this is another one that transfers really well to sliders, to be honest. It's like it's fairly rotund anyway. I mean, its wings, maybe you could argue, should be poking out a little bit more. But, you know, overall, very cute. Um, I mean, to be fair, Generation 1's designs were pretty simple, so they were hard to really mess up. Ooh, next up we have... <laughs> My god, <laughs> I forgot how chunky he was. Jesus Christ, Meowth. You, man, you really need to, uh, you need to see the same dietation that Pikachu saw. It's, um, man, this Meowth as well always kind of put me off a little bit. His eyes, I feel like, are a little bit too wide. He's kind of looking in two directions. I don't know, maybe it's just me, maybe I'm nitpicking. But as, as a kid, he was always the kind of like... Uh, okay, he's cool. I, he came in as double pack for sure. Oh, I know who he came in double pack with. Cool, right. This is slowly um, coming back to me. Yet again, his tail is moulded onto his body and stuff. He's a cute, chunky boy. Oh, actually, do you know? Hey, I think Meowth's the furthest one so far. I should give all of these a roll test, but I cannot be bothered to go back now. Next, oh, yo. I forgot I had a Gengar. Uh, unfortunately, this guy's feeling a little bit sticky, so I don't know if you guys have had plastic, kind of rubbery plastic thing that was made about 20 or 30 years ago, but unfortunately, slowly it starts to go all weird and sticky and stuff, and I've never really found a way to get rid of that, and unfortunately, Gengar, weirdly, Gengar's the first one though, the rest of them seem to be alright, but... Gengar, for some reason, maybe it's whatever like they use to make it purple or something, seems to be getting a little bit sticky. Uh, oh well, maybe I'm le I'll leave him out for a few weeks or something. Uh, it may just be that he was getting sticky in here. Next up, ooh, is Oddish. E. This is another one I really liked because yet again, he translates really well to this. Also, right. Everything else had to be, like, thinged down, you know, kind of, like, part of the body. But his leaves are all, like, individually moulded. I mean, you could argue those two are copies of those two. It's a, it's a perfect mirror, and then this one was separate. But, like, look, you know, you, you get you get separate moulding there. Like, that looks really good, I think. Admittedly, I don't think Oddish would have looked right if they just plastered it onto his body. But, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm, um, again, nitpick. Oh, yo! Oh, I forgot about this one as well. Man, this is bringing back loads of memories for me. Um, so, next up, we have Sandshrew. Oh, he looks really good as a slider, actually. This is, honestly, I don't think I've seen these sliders in something like 10 years or something. They've been in my old bedroom, but I just, I never opened them up. I always kind of kept them, because like, eh, one day I'll take a look at them. And look what I'm doing now. I'm sharing it with you guys, all three of you. So, look at that, man, and you, you kind of get the moulding there, his like armour bits, I don't know how well that's coming up on camera to be honest, it's very light. But yeah, Sandshrew looks very nice. Now obviously scale was never a factor here because Sandshrew towers over Golem, and I don't think that's correct. Um, I mean, Charizard is five foot something, he's definitely not slightly shorter than Pikachu. Next up, we ooh, we have a Golduck. No, Psyduck. What am I on about? Yeah, Psyduck, sorry. Um, as you can tell, this is this is definitely inspired by the anime as well. Because, you know, Psyduck was big in the anime because Misty had one. It's very cute. It's another Pokemon that I think translates really well. Um, 
I mean, it's got the standard tale of like, oh, it's pressed against its body. But at this point, it's just nice to remember the tail. Next up, oh, oh yeah. Next up, we've got Pidgeotto. Yeah, I remember this guy now. He was always a bit of a weird one. I always quite liked Pidgeotto, especially his design and stuff. I thought he was really cool. But like, as a slider, he looks slightly awkward. I don't know, he looks slightly too plump. I think his head is a bit too big as well, and it's like, at a weird angle, something about his eyes. I don't know, maybe it's just me. But you know, his tail is done really well. Um, I don't know, his, his hair plumage thing is really cool. Obviously his wings are there and his feet are kind of implied, basically. You can't even see all the moulding. I'm going to have to move these back a bit. Give me a second. Eee, there we are. I think I may have moved them back a little bit too much, but we still... Okay, we got another Psyduck. Uh, ooh, yeah, this is the one that had the weird mark on its eye. So, um, yeah, I, I can't seem to get that off. I tried washing it years ago. And uh, unfortunately, someone just took a permanent marker to it, I think. Uh, this was one of the ones I bought second-hand. As you can see... Oh, actually, do you know, there's a little bit of a colour difference. Or is it just the viewfinder? That looks a little bit darker to me than that one. But I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Next up, ooh, yay. So slightly out of left field here, Electabuzz. Like, how much? How many Electabuzz figures have you seen in your life? Honestly, for me, not many. I really like his design. I love the like Thunderbolts in his stomach and stuff. And yeah, Electabuzz just never got featured in stuff, I guess. He kind of seemed simple enough to make a figure of, so they made one of him or whatever. But yeah, we got his uh, plumage, his little like um, antennae things. He looks pretty good, to be honest. I mean, his arms are awkwardly folded up. Uh, he's, he's quite a tall thing, isn't he? And like, his tail is, you know, and obviously he's very wide, but they're deformed. They're meant to be wide, kind of like Funko Pops, but actually good quality. Uh, Ooh, yes! Next up uh, is my boy, the best Gen 1 starter. Uh, you're welcome to fight me in the comments, but you're wrong. It is Blastoise. Ah, oh, man. I can never get enough of Blastoise stuff. I've got like a plushie, a big Japanese figure. I've got quite a few Blastoise things, and he's just so cool. I love his designs and his cannons and stuff. Uh, if I was really nitpicking, they could have coloured the insides of the cannons black to make it look like it has depth. But to be honest, they've got like the lines and stuff, and uh, this is a really well detailed figure. To be honest, like this, I feel like is I don't know is one of the be is one of the better detailed ones. I'm gonna put him next to Charizard. Uh, uh, okay, I don't think we have as many as I thought we would actually. Hey, so. Next up is the perfect Pokemon slider, Snorlax. Because he's just... He, he's just Snorlax. Like, he's he's in the classic pose. It's... Uh, this is another one of my favourite sliders as well, I think. Because he... You know, th they didn't have to change anything about him. He's literally perfect for a slider. Also, so the ball seems to hang quite a bit there. Right, let's try it. Oh, wow. Okay. Yo, Snorlax is like... Damn, he's good. He's very good. Okay, cool. Next up is Poliwhirl. Now, I don't know if you guys remember this. Um, if anyone who was a kid, you know, in 99 or ever remembers. But Poliwhirl featured a lot in marketing materials. I have a um, gym bag that I've put old, like, plushies into that has, like... Charizard, Venusaur, Gengar, Pikachu, and like Poliwhirl on it. It was super weird. I'm guessing that like originally Poliwhirl was meant to be quite a big um, Pokemon in the anime or something. Because like it's so strange. You you know, why wouldn't they go for like Poliwag or Poliwrath? Either the cute one or the fully evolved one. Very strange, but I suppose he looks like friendly enough and kind of weird, whereas Poliwrath just looks angry, so maybe they're like, uh, we don't want to scare kids off it. Uh, oh, <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, right, okay, so next up is a finger figure of Zigzagoon. 
Uh, it, it's kind of like you put your finger in there and it goes on stuff. Yeah, um, I think I bought this somewhere. I think I bought it like a car boot sale uh, years later, basically. I think it was like 50 pence or something, and I was like, well, that's cute. And I put him to the side, though, because he's not a slider. Uh, next up, uh, oh, oh man. Okay, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the non-sliders to the side, and we'll go through them in a minute. Got another Polywill. Uh, that again, one of these is the kind of second-hand one I'd have got at a car boot, boot sale. Don't know which is which. Uh, ooh, next up, an interesting one, Raticate. Why I don't know exactly. Um, very strange. I mean, to be fair, it's a well-detailed Raticate. Like, everything's there and stuff. The moulding is... Ooh, the moulding stuff is really good, but... I don't know. And, like, the tail and everything. They've got him spot on, to be honest. But, like... What a strange inclusion. I suppose it's the case of... They had to go through all 150 and work out what would make the best... Oh, there is a Charmander! Oh, thank goodness. Okay. I'm going to arrange these in a nicer way uh, at the end, I think, because I want to get a thumbnail out of this. So, uh, there is Charmander in all his symmetrical glory. Actually, no, his arms aren't symmetrical. Never mind. Um, yeah, very cute Charmander. Uh, his tail, obviously, moulded to his back, as are all the others. But yet again, he's a very simple one. Um, you know, he, he works really well as a slider. I think we've got, like, a couple more that maybe doubles. Ooh! Yo, I don't remember him. Oh wait, no, I kind of do. Okay, uh, next up is Nido King. Right, I don't remember him being a slider. Sort of, oh, it's kind of coming back to me. I, I kind of remember the arms. The arms kind of sticking out from the knees onwards and stuff. He's gone slightly sticky as well. It must be the purple. Whatever they use as purple plastic, I think is uh, unfortunately becoming like stickier than the rest of them. It's not too bad, but you can definitely like feel it and stuff, which is a shame. But thankfully, at the very least, I have this video to commemorate my sliders collection. Oh, we got another Pikachu. Uh, let me wait. Hang on. What? Oh, we've got two different designs of Pikachu. Cool. Right. This must be original. Right. That's definitely original Pikachu. Um. Because this looks a bit more defined and a little bit slimmer in a way as well. Yeah, give me a second. Alright, so this one is from the year 2000. Right, okay then. I wonder if he came with the battle set. So remember I mentioned with the like spinner door things? I wonder if he came with that. Because um, the tail is like a lot... Uh, more sort of attached to his back as well. That one sticks out quite a bit, but that one's really smooth, to be honest. That's really interesting. Okay. I don't think I ever realised. Or maybe I did, and I've just fully, completely blanked it from my memory. Hey, yes! Man, this is the one I was looking for, for since the start. I was slightly concerned that I'd like put him somewhere else. We have Cuborn. Uh, Cuborn, yet again, I think is well suited to this figure series. He's sort of fairly basic. Uh, you can see his boundary carries there and his mother's skull, uh, which you can kind of see underneath there. So that was always something I thought was interesting as a kid. That, you know, the bone, the, the helmet doesn't stick all the way out. There is like a way for him to slide his head in there. But yeah, because uh, obviously it's a mystery to what he looks like. And I think... Ah, hey, there we are. So this is the Pokemon that came with Meowth in the double pack. I'm pretty sure. Don't take my word on it, though. That is Ekans, which I always really thought was a cool design for the slider. Because, I mean, he's just called up. It's, it's perfect. It's it's Ekans. Uh, he's a simple Pokemon. He's he's really cool. I always liked Ekans. Uh, but yeah, he's just purple snake boy. Uh, right, is that it? No, hang on. We have... Oh! Yeah, how did I forget about this? We have Eevee! There we go. So I think this I bought as a second-hand thing as well, as you can see from the marks. Um, very dark. 
compared to like modern Eevee, he was quite like light brown, uh, if I remember correctly. Also, the face is a bit strange as well. And sort of, they they've definitely changed Eevee over the years as well. I think uh, you see a bit of a haircut going on there, even. But yeah, this is uh, original 1999 Eevee. Uh, so all you Eevee fans out there, I'm sure you're confused about why. It looks slightly different. Uh, I'm feeling a row. Ah, hang on. We have. Oh, we have a second Clefairy. Where did I put Clefairy last time? I, oh, there it is in the back there, near uh, the Psyducks. There we go. Uh, oh, hang on. We. Oh, we have a. We have a second Pidgeotto as well. All right then. Uh, no. Oh, Kangaskhan! Hey, there we go. That's pretty cool. Hey, there we are. So we've got all the... Man, what I really like to a Kangaskhan, actually, is they bothered to mould all the, like, armour plates that they had on it. Which I was always impressed with, because, like, as a kid, I genuinely couldn't have told you Kangaskhan had armour plates on it. And obviously they've moulded the, um... The baby Kangaskhan as well. Baby Khan. Which is very cute. Um, yeah, honestly, Kangaskhan looks really cool as well. And it's another, it's another thing I was glad to have in slider form, because like, I don't know, they, I never saw a Kangaskhan figure in the wild. Ooh, and of course, because it's animated. Ooh, wow, they've done a lot with the Jigglypuff's face over the years as well. This is, uh, I know it is kind of deformed, but. God damn, its eyes are very blue. Very, well, turquoise, almost, to be honest. Um, yeah, yet again, the perfect slider Pokemon, really, because it's, it's just a ball. It's just a ball with eyes and a tuft of hair. Uh, I think that, no, ooh, <gasps> yo! Okay, sorry, so I keep mentioning that a lot of these things are the best sliders. And we'll end it on one I really like, Rhyhorn. Look at the moulding on this Rhyhorn. It's really impressive. Like, you can see layers and stuff, and like contours. I don't know, but maybe it's just me. I mean, maybe you guys are seeing a really simple pattern and you're like, well, yeah, that would be super easy to mould. But I don't know, I was... This all has kind of impressed me as well. It's, uh... I really like Rhyhorn, and yet again... A figure I never saw in the wild in the regular Tommy version, so this slider was all I had, but man, I was happy. Rayon's a Pokemon I often forget about. Uh, right, so I'm going to move these to the side for a second, or I'm going to move my camera maybe. I'm going to show you guys the other like weird things I put in here, um, and then I'll, I'll end the video in a minute. See you in a sec. All right, so we have the kind of misfit Pokemon here, which are the Weird things that are kind of like the sliders, but not not really at all in any way, shape, or form. So uh, these are the other things I had in my um, in my box. I've got a probably knockoff Pikachu keychain that's very rubbery. It's made of rubber. I don't know where I got this. I feel like this is a present somehow, but it's got a kind of carabiner clip kind of thing. Um, yeah, this is pretty decent. Actually, hang on. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it is actually an official one. It says 2000 Nintendo. So I don't know where I got that from. It's probably a gift from someone because there's one thing I really disliked as a kid and still kind of like dislike these days, which is keychain things. I don't... I'm not going to put them on a bag. I'm not going to hang them up because that would be weird. Like, they're, they're just pointless. Um, but anyway, I also have this Gengar keychain, which I really like. Now, this is quite literally the Tomy Gengar figure, but they've just shoved some chains into his head, because um, I'm pretty sure I have two of these Gengars. It's also like a pencil topper or something. It's very strange. But, uh, but yeah, that was... Um, what I like about this figure is it's kind of translucent, as you can see, um, which I don't think they ever made. Gengar's from in the future, and obviously Ken Sugimori things, he has the like white stuff 
uh, behind him and he's kind of like lit up a little bit. I really like this mould. This Gengar figure for me is like pure nostalgia. Now, actually thinking of it, I may be telling you guys a lie. I think this came in a Pokeball that a friend gave me. Basically, it was a plastic Pokeball. You press the button and there was like a slot that you slide Pokemon onto and I guess you kind of play battle with them. I, I never understood it myself. But, you know, uh, an extra Gengar figure is never a bad thing. Um, the penultimate one. Now, this is a real, actual piece of merchandise. Uh, I remember buying this in Woolworths as a child. So this is a Psyduck, uh, and his eyes are horrific. The paint job, honestly, is pretty bad. That's a bit scratched up. That's my fault. Uh, however, it does have one feature that I don't think the batteries are going to be able to show you, but I'm going to give it a try. If you turn this... Uh... Oh dear. Okay. No. Right. Okay. That is fair enough. Uh, these batteries have been in him for about 20 years or something now. Unfortunately, I can't show you guys, but basically he used to straw bread. Like there'd be a red flashing light that got a doof, 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 doof on. Uh, that was always a very weird one. I think I bought it mainly because I saw it in a, a cheap store for something like a pound. I was like, hey, I'll buy that. Because I really liked Psyduck for a while as a kid. I don't know why. And I'm moving everything to the back because the last one i got to show you is this really adorable Mew Runner. I don't know what it's called. Uh, there were a few different... Uh, versions of this, I remember. I bought this. This is probably... Actually, let me check the tag. Alright, so this is actually a Tomy product, but as you can see, it's actually Japanese, I think. Um, because I bought this in a store like a year or two... A year or two after the hype of Pokemon. I think they'd had like an influx of Japanese products and stuff. Uh, but this... Oh wait, no. That's it. You move it back. Oh! Jesus Christ, that is fast. Uh, okay, right, yeah, so he just kind of does a run, basically. And this is incredibly cute. I don't know why we didn't get these over here, or maybe we did and I just missed them, but... See, that is really fast. That's like barely a wind-up as well. So, uh, so yeah, those are, the, those are the other figures I had in here, which I might as well show you guys, because I'm not going to do a separate video on them. Anyway, let's go back to the sliders. Alright, I'm back and I've uh, kind of arranged them a little bit easier so you guys can kind of see more of them. Uh, something, something weird has, has uh, struck me now, that they made a Blastoise and a Charizard, but they, they made an Ivysaur. What? What? Because I knew I'd never seen a war total, and for some reason, they... What? I, Venusaur is easier to make than Ivysaur, surely. Like, it, it would be less of something sticking out. Like, I, Venusaur's leaf is really white. I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, that, that wraps up my look at Pokemon sliders. Uh, as you can see, they're, they're kind of weird. They're weird figures. Um... Now, I'm preempting the potential for some comments here. Uh, so some people may be interested in asking, Hey, where can you buy these? These look really cool. I'd love some for myself. Um, well, obviously, they haven't made these since about the year 2000. So, unfortunately, you're about 20 years too late. Uh, I have seen quite a few listings on eBay for, like, loose ones of these. And I have seen a few in package as well. And... To be honest, you could probably buy some of these sealed figures, you know, well, packs of like two or whatever, for about £20, $25, something like that. It is quite expensive, but if it happens, I guess, that there's a two-pack featuring like two of your favourite Pokemon, I guess it's not the end of the world. Um, yeah, these never really took off, to be honest. These were a weird kind of brief trend that... They tried to do, and it just it didn't really take off, because... Uh, how does Rayhorn slide? Yeah, not very well. Okay, cool. So, uh, they're great at turning, but as a game thing, I never played them. I just collected them, because that's what I'm like. But yeah, thank you very much for coming with me down memory lane, really. I've just been 
taking a look and being very nostalgic. I really hope this was interesting for some people. Hopefully, at the very least, this is some kind of document, so in future if someone's curious about what the hell Pokemon sliders were, I can maybe shed a bit more light. I don't know how many I have uh, in terms of how many they made. To my knowledge, they didn't make many more than these, but my knowledge was based on what I saw in my local stores. So, you know, th this could be a fraction of the entire collection, or I could have a complete collection and not know. And to be fair, to be honest, don't really care. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure. I shall be, as I've hinted at, making some more kind of nostalgic Pokemon episodes in the future. And I'm just going to give you guys a very brief um, hint at what may come up in the future. Maybe keep an eye out on my channel soon. So until next time, goodbye.